Hello, everybody. I am 13, and it's been like five minutes, and I have not been able to stop laughing. So, <laughs> uh, I wanted to make tonight a kind of quicker one because I'm going to be doing a code assessment tomorrow, and I wanted to like refresh on Java because I haven't touched it in a little bit. And uh, just not even thinking about it, I put the highlight card as Flame of Keld, the saga, and it completely broke everything. Like, completely broke everything. Like, when I know I need to study for something, it like completely broke everything. But like, look at Squirrel Dealer. It just like broke everything. Okay, well, enough of that. Uh, we are playing a quicker one tonight. Uh, this is Mono Red Hellbent. Uh, it's pretty close to the Mono Red Prowess list. But as even though I'm a fan of drawing cards tonight, we're going to be discarding a lot of them. Uh, for those of you that are not aware, Hellbent is a key word that says that you have no cards in hand. Uh, we will be emptying our hand for the most part, unless we're going to flip Chandra, but I'll cover that in a second. But keyword Hellbent, no cards in hand. That's where the name comes from. All right, so going back to the deck, you can see most of our deck costs one or two. In fact, most of the cards in our three drop pile cost one or two. But... Uh, yeah, that's basically what we're doing. So Flame of Keld was the saga. Uh, the card art literally just broke everything on Squirrel Dealer. It was amazing. But first effect, discard your hand. So hopefully you're going to be doing Flame of Keld with nothing in hand. Then during your next turn, you draw two cards. So you have three cards in hand for that turn. And then the following turn, if a red source is going to deal damage to something, it deals two plus that damage to something. So we're going to be using that to combo. I'll cover the other combo card in a second. But then we also are running a couple of copies of Bedlam Reveler. Uh, big want for this deck is Bedlam Reveler forces us to discard our hand and then draw three cards. Right now, this is the only card utilizing our graveyard. And when we're putting so many cards into our yard, I'd be really interested in seeing something like if Bag of Holding works. Uh, we do need to utilize our graveyard in a better way, and we don't really have a good delve target in red. But then we get Hazaret that can attack or block if we don't really have cards in hand. And we can use Hazaret to trigger discard, um, madness, all the fun stuff. But basically, she's going to be discarding cards and attacking and just being a good threat. Beyond that, our combo. So the Chandra and the Flame Brand Archer both deal one damage to an opponent whenever you cast. Basically a non-creature. Uh, I think Chandra's actually a red card. Uh, but, yeah, whenever you cast a red spell, untap her. If Flame of Keld is going off, each one of those is going to ping for three as opposed to one. So that's going to be a combo kill. Uh, plus, I always just want to flip Chandra. Like, when she got spoiled, uh, I knew Jace was going to be amazing, but I figured I'd be brewing Chandra a lot. And it's kind of hard to make that happen in red. Like, by the time you're hitting three mana, you're kind of running out of gas. But we have Light Up the Stage. We're going to be using these two guys to trigger Spectacle and also just get us some raw card advantage. And those cards don't go to hand, pretty similar to Rogue on Sunday, where we just get card advantage, we can burn through them pretty quick because our CMC is low. Then beyond that, we have a bunch of little one drops, Bomat Courier, Taylor Swift Spear, and Steamkin. Steamkin's going to be able to generate us a lot of mana on the turns that we're trying to like kind of pseudo go off. Uh, we will be hellbent for most of this stream. And on that note, uh, it's very possible that we call this <laughs> uh, something like Heckbed on YouTube. I don't know. If YouTube complains, we'll come up with a different name, but oh, Flame of Keld. Flame of Keld, Flame of Keld. Uh, yeah, that's the deck. So a bunch of low stuff to the ground. Sideboard, we get some stuff for control. We get some stuff for mid-range. But for the most part, we're just putting a bunch of little things out there and then trying to get a combo kill if possible. But more than likely, we're going to play a little similar to Mono Red. Wow, this hand is atrocious. So we're running this Drowned Temple because we can discard it to things like uh, Hazret and then play it from the yard. It's basically a way to ramp, but we can't keep that. That's pretty awful. Wow, this isn't much better. All right, well, I suppose that means I'm actually going to tuck a land here because odds are I will be discarding at least a Hazaret. If we're playing against Thoughtseize, then that kind of covers us versus... Okay, uh, looks like Mono Green Ramp right off the top. So... Kind of sucks we didn't have a faster hand, but I guess we'll see what we can do here. At this point, it is looking like I'm probably just going to fire off Flame of Kel to get some cheaper stuff going on. Like, opponent's just going to be ramping their heart out, gaining some life. Yikes. Okay. Does Light Up the cha Stage change things? 
I think it does. Light up the stage. We can't trigger it yet, but that gives us some pseudo card advantage, so we can at least play light up the stage, try to rip a land off the top, then have options between Hazrad and something else. We can cast a Hazrad and then Flame of Keld to just let her attack. How's it going, Neurodrain? Uh, not a whole lot's going on. I did find out that I broke Squirrel Dealer by trying to put a Saga as card art. Yeah, that, that's not a normal card. <laughs> okay, Corsair gets some beats in. Opponent has a Mutavolt, so this might actually not be ramp. Guess we'll see. Uh, on the off chance I am discarding Flame of Keld for any reason, I'm going to actually run out the Scavenger Grounds in case they're running Graveyard for some reason. I can't imagine that they are, but I don't know. Okay, there's a Carry Zev and a Mountain. That's at least a start. We had rough internet at work today, and we told one of our uh, QE to go home and try to run automation from his house just because we couldn't do anything from our office. Today was a little bit of a slower day. All right, well, opponent is definitely getting some value town going on here between the tracker and the courser. I think right now we actually just want to trigger this Flame of Keld, so we might be discarding our hand. Yikes. All right, well, this is technically a fast clock. I mean, we're gonna be taking likely seven next turn, and then we'll be pretty close to dead. Okay, so they're just generic lands. <laughs> All right, Bomat Courier. Uh, I don't really get any benefit from the Graveyard or Exile, but may as well play the one in Exile. I guess that just means we'll play Carry Zev as a poor man's blocker that can at least select Courser Bounce. Then let's empty our hand with Flame of Keld, and hopefully we will be able to go off with a Chandra. Uh, SquirrelDealer.com is the website that has all of our decks on it. So, uh, If you're not logged in, you typically end up here. This is just basically a full list of all of our decks, full functionality with like the prices and everything. We haven't done too much dev work beyond just trying to make sure that deck prices are correct for the streaming tools, but at some point we'll hopefully have like check out a card hoarder and stuff like that all added to the website. For the most part though, I'm doing most of the dev work and this is all kind of just a side hobby for me, so it's going a little slow. All right, so opponents on Wayward Sword Tooth. They haven't shown us another color. The land payoffs in this set are Gitrog Monster and Tet Yova, so I could see any variant of Sultai coming up. Uh, they probably would have shown us more red at this point if they were Omnoth. Yeah. All right, so I think I just have to take 12 here. I'll be blocking the tireless tracker next turn. All right, that's a wild slash that kind of goes off. Hazaret. Eh, we're not attacking. So, yeah, we're just dead. We didn't find a Chandra or a can't remember what it's called. One of those draft fodders for Mon and Cat. Firebrand Archer. Well, opponent is definitely playing mid-range. Glorybringer won't be able to kill the Sylvan Advocate after it's gone off, but it's still a good enough card to have. Bedlam Revelers is probably getting cut for that reason. I could see Chandra. Chandra here is... Uh, I will put that on my brewing list. That is a card that I've always wanted to play with, so that actually won't be that hard. I have to find something to do it, but making a note of that right now. Permeating mess. I'll see if I can get that next week. If I can't come up with a good idea, we might postpone it another week. But it does seem like Pioneer is a format that has stuff that can make permeating mass happen. Uh, Chandra's supposed to come in for control. I think we're supposed to just be able to kill our opponent. Alpine Moon can come in to name any of their man lands. It's also safe to assume that they have Nykthos, at least one of them. I would hope that they have like Elvish Reclaimer or Sylvan Scrying or something to go Tudor Lands. Hmm. All right, so what does that mean we're cutting? 
Fiery Temper has to actually be enabled. Chandra's a combo piece. I can see Tremia Hazaret, especially if we're going up to Glorybringer. In fact, it might be two Hazarets. Hazaret costing four and having five drops in hand means that it's going to be a little hard to go off. I think that last game I was supposed to mulligan again. Going down to five, especially when you're a Hellbent deck, just feels awful, but it was so, so awkward. Okay, this actually does seem fine. So odds are I'll be shooting this Wild Slash off just to trigger the light up the stage on two, but I can at least play on tempo and give our opponent no option with the Muta Vaults. They didn't show us a second color, so I can't assume that they're not two color yet. If they're not two color, they shouldn't have any of the Zendikar Manlands in play, like Lumbering Falls or... I'm thinking of Raging Ravine just because it saw more play, but... What was the other green one? Okay, that might bug me. Let's see. We hit Runway Steamkin and Random Map Rune, so that's at least a good start. Sorry, this is really going to bug me, though. Uh, yeah, they wouldn't be on Grove of the Guardian. I guess they could have the Desert... Oracle Tax Green. Ah, the other one was Hissing Quagmire. Yep, no, it was basically Sultai. All right. I could totally see a world where I block and wild slash the Sylvan Advocate here. I don't really think it's necessary because this will be at least a 3 3 next turn. We just need to find one more land before. Yeah. All right. Well, you're not online yet. That's not a problem. I mean, as Vigilance, you may as well get in. It'd be a bare minimum two for one out of me if I make that trade. All right. Another Glory Bringer isn't terrible, but it does likely mean that I'm going to have to cash out the counters on this Runaway Steamkin or to cast it, but anything off the top is castable. All right, and we'll stay back. They're gonna have to find a way to ramp to turn the Sylvan Advocate online. Oh, I absolutely loved Sylvan Advocate in Standard. Like, I had bought my Cocos pretty much just because of Sylvan Advocate. Man, playing him with the uh, Dragon Master Outcast was awesome. Ooh, all right, well, that scavenging news is looking like a pretty good target for Wild Slash. Yep, let's yield to you. I was actually really surprised when I was looking for Took me a little too long to find that Dragon Master Outcast. <laughs> okay, well, correction. Anything off the top except for yet another Glory Bringer was going to be castable. Dragon Master Outcast was like seven bucks, though. Like, he, he did not scale like the other cards that came into Pioneer. All right, Nissus Pilgrimage is turning on the Advocate. Honestly, not great for me. Opponent has not made a land drop yet, which means this Muta Vault's coming in. Thanks to Alpine Moon, it's going to be just a non-painful mana confluence. All right, so they can make multiple, multiple land drops. I have Glory Bringers that can't kill Wayward Sword Tooths. At this point, if you blow me out, you blow me out. They'll kill the 3-3. Three, three. Yeah, it's a really sweet card. Okay, Castle and Breath. So, currently taking 10 on the crackback. But I'm going to have to roast this Courser just because they can play so many cards off the top of their deck. It's a lot of virtual card advantage with the... Wayward Swordtooths. 
Then I think I'm looking for a Flame of Keld off the top. Honestly, none of it's great. I need to find a way to kill these Wayward Sword too. So I guess that means Hazaret off the top would be the best, but I'm not going to have a way to empty my hand. So this one's probably over. Oh, big payoff, assuming... Nope. I was going to say, I thought it was going to be the new Hydra, just because it's a really good payoff for mana, but World Breaker is also equally terrifying. Yep, Ruins down. The fact that they can crack lands and replay this means that we're kind of running out of options. Yikes, we had some really awkward draws. So Taylor can jump block, but that's about it. Uh, Taylor crack will let me cast the Glorybringer, but I won't have anything else to do for the turn. I'd end up having a 1-1 Runaway Steam Can, a 1-2 Monastery Swift Spear, and a 4-4. All that have to chump block? Yeah, we're done here. All right, well, that was pretty painful. Cannot deny that. We'll see if we can do a little bit better on the next one. Opponent also didn't have the genuine general mana dorks like Land of War Elves and... Uh, Elvish Mystic, so we weren't able to just like Wild Slash those and keep them off tempo. They were able to just naturally go hit their land drops. They also didn't have the bigger payoffs like Ulamog, though. And it feels like opponent's deck is pretty good at crushing mid-range, but ends up getting taken out by some of the bigger stuff in the format like Lotus Field and the Mono Red Aggro list that's not ours, just trying to be empty-handed. <laughs> ah, I love that Flame of Geld. <laughs> I almost don't want to fix it. <laughs> if I move it to the second highlight spot, then it would actually not cause problems for the website, but could still be at the deck view. Eh, we're only going to use the deck view here. I guess that doesn't matter. All right, one the die roll. That feels important. And this is a hand I'm much more excited to see here. We get a lead on Bomac Courier to help refuel. Flame of Keld, honestly, the redundant one doesn't do anything. This is a six-card hand, but we get a Wild Slash something. We get a discard the Drown Yard Temple to ramp like this. is. This is the hand I wanted to sign up for with this list, not five lands and two Hazarets. All right, Mr. Courier, I believe you can get me good cards. Don't let me down, buddy. Then that means I'm likely just going to be running out the mountain this turn. Get some attacks in, and then we can Flame of Kelt next turn after we've made our land drop, and we can pitch the Drown Yard Temple. Uh, Blooming Marsh also means that we're likely playing against the Gruel List, so Wild Slash will be able to take out a Grim Flare, assuming that's going to be their blocker. Uh, if they end up having Sylvan Carry added and they go with the Soul Flare List, it might be a little bit more of a struggle. We'll have to race to kill them and hope they don't get lifelink. Honestly, I think Gruul's a better matchup for us because we don't care about the card disadvantage. All right, well, Wild Slash your face. Bedlam Reveler. Well, that's still going to make us discard our hand and we're a ways away from that. So let's go ahead and just Flame of Keld, and that way we can crack the Bomat Courier whenever we feel like it. That actually might have been loose. I should have attacked in with Bomat Courier first. I was thinking I wanted to get the additional point in, but now if they try to kill the Bomat Courier with this trigger on the stack, then I wouldn't be able to cash this out. Yep, that's fine. Yeah, I think that my sequencing was just a little weak to removal spell. Although if this is Assassin's Trophy, they're likely going after the Flame of Keld anyway because of the third saga. All right, opponent, what you got? I have to imagine you have something here. Grizzly Salvage. So this could also just be Dredge. They hit Lotleth Troll, Nullhide Ferox, and Gather the Pact. Uh, Nullhide Ferox seems like an interesting include. That probably means that this is Soul Flayer for the Hexproof. I mean, that's the discard to put additional creatures into the yard, so... 
Yeah, this is probably Soul Flare. Which means I'm going to have to crack the Bomat Courier this turn so I can get a combo piece out. Yeah, this Nullhide Ferox seems like an interesting include. Seder Wayfinder. They hit Questing Beast and Murderous Rider. Okay, maybe I don't know what's going on then. Let's draw a couple of cards, instep so we can't get thoughts used. Hmm, there's a wild slash, it's not bad. We did find our Chandra though, so Chandra and the third saga of Flame of Keld is gonna be how we try to combo off here. We'll even have the light up the stage to find a couple of more one drops. That just sounds amazing. Then this untaps whenever I cast a red spell, so I can actually Swift Spear next turn. I think that means I get to leave up Wild Slash for anything that might come down out of our opponent here. <laughs> yeah, pause to read Chandra. You don't see this Chandra much, but this means I get to hold up Wild Slash. Then we have at least three triggers here, which means we'll be flipping her. But three times three is nine, so if we Wild Slash our opponent's face next turn, we'll actually be super close to just killing them. Opponent has not found lifelink yet, if this is supposed to be a Soul Flayer deck. Oh wait, no. Yeah, the Murderous Rider will have the lifelink. But no double strike. Okay, another Seder Wayfinder. They are leaving up the Black Black. They found a Nullhide Ferox and a lot less troll again. As well as another Grizzly Salvage. All right, I want to do big things here. Oh, ho, 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 ho. okay. We're gonna have some fun here. We're getting combo kill game two. So Castle Limbreath, uh, let's go ahead and ping our opponent. Oh, it's if it deals three damage. Okay, whatever, we have the backup archer, we're good. I was supposed to hold control there. Okay, Firebrand Archer is still fine. So let's go ahead and spectacle this. Get a couple more options. Okay, that's worth noting though. Okay, so we just hit the other Wild Slash, we're good. Uh, running out this Castle Limbreath was poor sequencing on my part. I should have actually just gone for the land off of the spectacle but that's fine like we had well over overkill here if i actually would have held control properly we would have been able to get multiple triggers out of her before she flipped didn't matter though all right so opponent is on soul flare more than likely i think we just want to go for a fast kill which likely means ship it back i wasn't super sold on this rampaging ferocidon uh, we put a lot of random creatures into play, but the players can't gain life might be relevant here. I can see bringing that in over maybe a Fiery Temper since this doesn't really kill a whole lot and requires setup. Yeah, I mean, that looks kind of fun. I could also see an argument to pull out Carrie Zev. She's just in here as a fun of. I really liked her as her two-drop legendary cycle and Aether Revolt. I mean, Chandra can reach over things. Chandra actually could also kill a Soul Flare if it's not indestructible. Or hexproof, but that doesn't seem very likely, so we can run like this. We will be on the draw here, which is kind of a big deal. Red decks always just prefer the play. Drawing the additional card when we're trying to get Hellbent is also slightly awkward. But I'd rather have it, like, no need to mulligan for no reason. Ooh, this is a lot of mana and an easy empty the hand for a Hazret. So this hand's going to be looking for like a Bedlam Reveler or a Flame of Kel to actually go off. Light up the stage is great with Bomat Courier. 
Get in there, buddy. You did draw us actually Chandra and relevant cards last time. I'm proud of you. I've had some very mean Bomat couriers in my history of playing Magic. Seder Wayfinder. Found Soul Flare and Zatalpa. <laughs> All right, then. Uh, they took the Woodland Cemetery. Makes sense. So I, I was about to say, I think I'm supposed to runway Steamkin here and just multi-spell the following turn, but drawing the Swift Spear means I'm going to be able to get in with the Bomat Courier, so I think that turned into the line. Swift Spear first for Prowess. I don't play a ton of Mono Red, but I do know a little bit about it. We'll go ahead and get some beats in. And then... That is one Soul Flare in the yard. Hopefully they don't have one in hand because Zatalpa has many, many, many keywords that are very, very bad. We don't even really have a way to get any rid of anything indestructible in this deck. That's not true. We do actually have a Soul Scar Mage. We have three of them. And then just Burn Spells could shrink it. Oh, that's not very nice. Hmm. What does that mean? I think that means I'm supposed to just runway Steamkin and then Alpha next turn, trigger the light up the stage with the other runway Steamkin out. Yeah, that'll stop us for a turn. We don't have any lightning strikes or basically anything that hits for three damage. Yeah, that's slightly awkward. Hopefully we find a Wild Slash, I think, is the takeaway there. If opponent's going to block us, I assume they're going to block the Bomat Courier. They have also seen our deck, so the Runway Steamkin goes up a lot in value, and they realize that we can get a lot of spells when Flame of Keld goes off. Yeah, I'm not really sure what that's supposed to mean. Gifted Aetherborn is a lot of keywords. It's a really good blocker. I mean... I love me some Vampire Nighthawk, and that was just a cheaper version. The lack of flying is actually kind of important, but... I mean, you can only make so many considerations. I don't think it's worth it to crack the Bomat Courier here. I do also think that there's a moderate chance that our opponent blocks the Bomat Courier. I could see emptying this hand for Bomat Courier. I like to light up the stage, but we'd be getting three fresh cards as well as fueling our graveyard. Yeah, that's fine with me. Let's go ahead and trigger the light up the stage. Primarily to get mana here. Uh, also looking for my land drop for turn. If I hit my land drop, that means I can Swift Spear, crack the runway Steamkin. Don't really want to get too far ahead of myself, though. I need to let this resolve. A lot of things can happen with two, two new cards. Ooh, all right. And then that's a backup Hazret. Yeah, so odds are I'm actually going to be casting a Hazret next turn, so I'm just going to run out my Swift Spear here. That gives me the most amount of mana. It also lets me use my hard mana here to cast Hazret or leave some mana up for Bomat Courier when I attack with Steamkin. If they decide to block it, I'll have the option to cycle out into mana or not. Harvest the Steamkin, all that fun stuff. <laughs> ah, about it recognized. Respect the Steamkin. I mean, to be fair, a post-combat Swift Spear with a Steamkin out basically means I'm trying to do something stupid with my Steamkin, but... Alright, opponent's at 15. I don't really have any damage doublers. I'm going to end up having a draw for turn. The Bomat Courier should be able to crack for at least four. 
Castle Embrith would actually allow me to attack for a moderate amount, but not more than Bomac Career cracking and getting Prowl slash Steamkin triggers. I don't know. With, with opponent having lifelink creatures out, it's probably just going to be more important to find a combo piece, which means the Bomac Career is going to need to get cracked at some point. If I don't find a land, I'll have to actually cast Hazret to get the three mana, then crack the Bomac Courier and hope to have something to use two mana on. Not a huge fan of that line, but it's looking like where I've got to go with it. Okay, Lotless Troll is a way to fuel the yard. Uh, Soul Flare actually is castable right now, so they might have been trying to figure out if this was enough keywords. There was no lifelink in there, though, so that's definitely worth noting. All right, that's a Bedlam Reveler. So how much do you cost right now? Six, yeah, not cheap enough. Do I actually want to cast the one from Exile? Probably not. Let's attack with Bomac Courier and crack it. Odds are I'll find a land to cast this Hazard. If I didn't, there's at least a castable red spell. I mean, my current hand is just a little slow and sloppy, and I already have a Hazard I can cast. Opponent's going to have some difficulty getting rid of it. They will be able to put good blockers in front of it, but removing it's going to be a problem. Yeah, I mean, never really expected to get in with it. It's up to your hand. Hmm, Wild Slash. That's a good one. Soulscar Mage, even better, though. Okay, so then this means red for Soulscar Mage. Oh, please remove the Runaway Steamkin with the trigger on the stack. I know you want to do it. I can Wild Slash in response and still get the mana. All right, Soulscar Mage, you can enter. I need to cast Hazret now so that she doesn't go away. Then I think that means I'm supposed to leave up this Wild Slash. Alternatively, I can just assume that something terrible is going to happen and run out my Soulscar Mage. No, holding up Wild Slash just makes more sense. Then that way, if they do try to remove Soulscar, I can actually Wild Slash and get my triggers. I oh, know it's turn six. Opponent has three mana. I have four. I'm 18 cards deep in my deck. I do really feel like that first match was a little awkward as far as mana drops went. We just found so many of them. Grapple with the past. So they're going to pick up the Soul Flare after they mill. I wonder what they're trying to decide. Like, they have priority here. They shouldn't have to determine order because this is post modern stuff. Oh, they returned an overgrown tomb? So they already had the soul flare. Kind of a bold decision, but. There's the lifelink. Do you have something hexproof? Because if you don't, you're probably going to be a really sad Soul Flare that's going to get shrank by Soul Scar Mage. You also don't have haste. All right. Death Touch, Double Strike, Flying, Lifelink, Indestructible, Trample, Vigilance. Uh, Soul Scar Mage works as a replacement effect. So if a source would deal non-combat damage, it gets minus one, minus one counters instead. Having two Soul Scar Mages will not give four counters off of Wild Slash. All right, well, let's be mana efficient and shrink your dude. All right, now it's a 2-2 instead of a 4-4. Super relevant. 
Oh, I guess this means I just empty my hand. I can attack in with Hazaret, but it's not going to do anything. I do want a redundant Soul Scar Mage for sure. Now, is it worth it to discard Monastery Swift Spear to Hazaret? Probably not. I think I'm just supposed to empty my hand here. Didn't have anything to do with the mana, so there's no point in cracking the mana off of Runway Steamkin yet. Opponent's going to be able to hit for four, but we're going to be drawing at least three cards here. We have an indestructible blocker. Yeah, I mean, I'm feeling in an all right spot. I mean, it's always possible that they get a hexproof life linker, and we just can't do anything about it. But yeah, if I attack in with either of these, they'll likely just gain more life from the soul flare. So we're playing defense for a moment. But three cards coming next turn. They also have this Murderous Rider that can come down. I mean, if they have another Grapple with the Past or Soul Flare, they do have a Zapalta and a Lotless Troll. So yeah, they're using Nullhide Ferox for Hexproof instead of Sylvan Carry added. Not sure if I'm a fan of that, but I have heard that the Golgari lists are a little bit more streamlined and they're more castable. Like Zapalta is supposed to be the only thing in the deck that's not castable. They're also not going after Chromanticore. Chromanticore. Alright, come on, good cards. Hopefully targeted burn. Fire Temper works. Wild Slash works. So, I know I'm going to kill this regardless. I did actually want to crack this here because that will let me cast a Lem Breath when I attack. Yeah, that was slightly loose play. I don't think it's going to make a difference, but... Then let's go ahead and hit the Gifted Aetherborn. Although, do they have lifelink yet? They don't. It, uh, it wouldn't have mattered. They'd just block with it anyway. I was going to say, it might have made more sense to Wild Slash this, so it'd be a zero one one and not be in the graveyard, but yeah, that doesn't matter. I actually really don't care about the Death Touch at the moment. Let's get rid of this guy. If he has enough cards to discard, then... Good on him. We're still going to shrink it. And then I can run basically all of my prowess creatures out. I think our opponent's trying to figure out exactly what's going on. Oh, nope. They're trying to figure out if it was worth discarding. Wait. No, okay. I was going to say they discarded a Soul Flare, but that's the one we killed. Let's yield to the Prowess Triggers. We'll make our land drop so we can activate Castle Embrith. And then, yeah, we're just going to Alpha here. No fear in this dojo. I am keeping back the Steamkin because it gives us the most ability to combo off. But they're on chump everything. They might throw a couple of things in front of the Soul Scar Mage. Yeah, that's indestructible. Death Touch doesn't work that way. I guess it'll keep you alive a little bit longer, but what kind of life is that? If I were Epona, I'd probably put both the Troll and the Murderous Rider in front of one Soul Scar Mage and the Gifted Aetherborn in front of the other. But no fear. Alright. Casual 12U. They also don't have anything that gives a Soul Flare haste. I don't know. That seems like a slight oversight in my head. I could see having a uh, Ginger Brute 
or Bill Matt Courier in the list. Uh, Bill Matt Courier would force you to go into red, but it still gives you a lot of flexibility in what you can do with the cards. I don't know. I don't think opponent's list was optimal. I think uh, Hoogland has played a Soul Flare list that did fairly well. If you're looking to play opponent's deck, <laughs> the Flame of Keld is amazing. <laughs> Oh, uh, the card art. I don't know why I didn't consider the up-down card arts. Like, obviously that was going to happen, but uh, what can you do? Oh, updated the match record incorrectly. We are one and one. And we'll take the play. Turn one, Soul Scar. Turn two, Wild Slash. Close to Chandra. Too many Hazarets. This is close to a playable hand. Still looking for a way to refuel after getting Hellbent. But this hand will get emptied pretty quickly. I think my favorite part about this deck is that if the aggro plan doesn't work very well, you have the backup plan of just like pinging your opponent to death very rapidly. Even if we don't have a active Flame of Keld, Chandra with Light Up the Stage is still minimum like three damage going to your opponent, then you flip her over and do two more damage. Like she's just five points of reach out of nowhere. And looks like we're playing against Golgari again. We'll have to figure out what variety that is, but drawing Firebrand Archer is pretty sweet. We also look like Amiket Limited. I mean, I didn't play a ton of Omicat Limited, but I remember it being pretty fun. There's a lot of zombies going on. All right, more Golgari shenanigans. This one is actual dredge. So they're going to be using Narc Amoeba and prized amalgams and the like to fuel their yard from the graveyard. We don't really have anything from our sideboard that cares about graveyard, which is a little unfortunate. Okay, well, I want to run out Chandra here, but if I get a two for one, I get a two for one. They should also read this from a mile away, not block. Then here's Chandra. <laughs> ah, this looks like such a weird board state. Like, this honestly looks like Chaos Draft. <laughs> kind of even from the opponent's side, too. Wow, hard cast prize amalgam. Okay, so opponent had a little bit of an awkward start. Narcs gets in. That's fine. I do need to be aware of Creeping Chill. If they're able to count all four of them, I'm starting significantly lower than I was planning on. And that's a Swift Spear. So let's go ahead and ping our opponent. Uh, cast the Monastery Swift Spear. That will untap Chandra. Then do I actually want to flip Chandra here? I don't think so. I think what I want to do is attack with Soul Scar, Swift Spear, and Chandra. And then I can shrink the prized amalgam with the Wild Slash. That will untap Chandra. I can ping again. Combat damage will flip her. Yeah, that seems right. So we can attack with everything but you, because you die, regardless of what I do. <laughs> Cute. Uh, we're going to kill the prized amalgam first. So let's go ahead and shrink prized amalgam. That will actually untap Chandra and the Firebrand will flip it, which kind of works out just the way that everything lined up. Let's go ahead and ping you. Hmm. Is this when... Oh, I had to do it after the trigger. Whatever, it's fine. Doesn't matter. Hazard's going to be coming down more than likely next turn, and we really blew away opponent's resources are currently at 11. They're going to have to hit a good number of creeping chills for anything to be viable there. And we have a couple of strong attackers. Narc Amoeba likely is going to have to stay back on defense now. Okay, so they hit a prized amalgam and a stitcher supplier that doesn't really do anything. They have the emerge. Oh, that's adorable. 
I mean, hitting like a prized amalgam with that actually is only five mana. I mean, I guess that's technically a viable win condition. So they hit a Creeping Chill. They're going up to 14. They hit another prized amalgam. So if they can find a way to get a creature back, then they're in pretty good position. But they haven't hit anything. I think I'm afraid of Narcomoeba off the top. Sad. This is going to be a post-combat light up the stage. That's fine, though. Narcomoeba is not very threatening after it's already entered the battlefield. Let's go ahead and prowse our dorks up, ping our opponent. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, if I hit a land off the top, I'm going to want to be able to cast Hazaret. So we'll just run all of that out. And, and that's a kind of scary force. Likely going to be cashing in this Bomat Courier pretty quickly. All right, they hit the Narcabimba, which means all the prized amalgams are coming back. And they found another one. This one. Yeah, that's, that's kind of mean. So that's all four prized amalgams? Yikes, big power swing. Found the other creeping chill, so they're going up to 15 as well. Man, should have had like a graph digger's cage or something on the side. That's pretty brutal. Anger of the gods? Like, do we not have anger of the gods? <laughs> we don't have anger of the gods. Rampaging Ferocidon will be pretty good though. Maybe should have gone up more of those. Light up the stage. Uh, I'll only get one trigger off of that. They have two blockers, which means I need to run basically all four things into it. Keep you back. I am currently dead on board. Pretty much just looking for something really good with this light up the stage. Uh, another light up the stage. Find a land. It's a land and a runaway steamkin, but I don't think that's good enough. I'll be throwing two creatures in front of prized amalgams here. That means I'm taking six, seven, eight, nine. If they find their last creeping shell, I could be in trouble. Or if they have another one of the... Oh, I think they kept it. The 10 mana thing? It was in reveal, but it didn't make it to the yard. Yep, that's the emerge. So that's going to give all their creatures plus 2, plus 2, and trample. And it's going to be an attacking 9-9, nine -nine, so we're good here. We put up a heck of a fight, and we don't really have sideboard cards, but that means Ferocidon's coming in, usual Tempers coming out. Uh, I, Glorybringer can kill a prized amalgam. I'm not super on board with that. I think I'd be a little bit more inclined to have Chandra and be able to kill it and still get card advantage after the fact. Prized amalgam stops non-creatures, but that really only stops Grizzly Salvage and Gather the Pact. It's probably not good enough. They... Likely won't have a blocker, and this will trigger, though. It'll be a 3-3 haste that pings for two anytime they try to fuel their yard. Yeah, probably not worth it. Uh, usual trim some of the high end for Chandra's coming in, and probably just the other fiery temper. Hitting that with the light up the stage is slightly awkward. I would prefer to just be able to shoot something. The three damage is kind of relevant versus the prized amalgams. I don't know. Scab Clan is just about as awkward versus Surprised Amalgam, so Wild Slash can clear dorks for Bomat Courier. I don't know. I like. I might like a two split just because this kills a prized Amalgam and Wild Slash does not. There is some synergy with Soulscar Mage shrinking it to be a 1-1 and not having it come back immediately. But I think that's only if we're going off the combo kill, and if we're going for a combo kill, we need like we need all of these, the Thermo Alchemist, which is probably a card nobody has ever heard of. 
this guy. He'll deal one damage to each opponent every turn, and he'll untap whenever you cast an instant or sorcery. We will play first. No lands. No red lands. Come on, we have 21 lands. And only four of them are off color. Okay, and this is horribly awkward, but it's happening. Uh, Scavenger Grounds was our incidental hate in the main board, and we can sack any maps to it. That's probably not going anywhere. So that'd be a mountain and probably bedlam, just because we won't be able to fuel our graveyard in order to enable it. Then we get to Runway Steamkin. Hopefully it will be able to attack in and we can light up the stage and make two one drops or a flame of Keld. But only have so many hopes and dreams at the moment. Mole getting down to five. The odds of them having something like a Seder Wayfinder or Narcomoeba they can just hard cast feel pretty high. Which means it'd be hard cast, light up the stage, and then have turn four additional two cards. Alright, opponent's got the slow up keep stop. I guess as long as we're waiting, I will see if I can find a couple more enablers for the combo in case I want to go that route. So, Format Pioneer, Oracle Text, Damage. We'll go with Target or Opponent, Color Red. And not an instant or sorcery. I don't think there are any enchantments that do it, but enchantments are artifacts, but it doesn't hurt to try. So this is whenever it attacks or blocks. Yikes, we can do so much better than this. This is 210 cards. Maybe each opponent. Yeah, that cut 10. That's terrible. Uh, Firebrand. Oh, look, opponent's back. <laughs> and another light up stage. Well, if this runway steam can survives and we get to make contact this turn, this is going to be a massive turn for just dumping our hand. Yep, there's the Wayfinder. So I think this means I want a Wild Slash. <laughs> they brought in Fable Flush. <laughs> I don't think they run that main board. Okay, so this kind of works. I'm going to Soul Scar Mage. That'll give it the counter. If I make my land drop here, then... They're going to be more inclined to think this is a light-up stage looking for land drops. No, they don't know I have red, so let's just go ahead and attack in. We'll act like that's all we're doing for the turn. Yep. I think by not playing that land, we were able to get them to not block here. And then the only thing I cast this turn is Bomat Courier, but that's probably fine. Yeah, so they're going to have to have an answer for this runway steamkin. Otherwise, we'll be able to play everything in our hand next turn. And we'll be attacking for 7, 10? I think we'll be attacking for 10. Okay, so they put no cards in with Gather the Pact. And they put Mount... Nope, that was me. Um, Creeping Chill, Grizzly Salvage, and Fatal Push. So they had the Woodland Cemetery and they played it. So all revealed cards are known. <laughs> oh, there's another Runaway Steam Kid. Man, sometimes it just feels amazing to dump your hand. Although that was slightly awkward timing. 
Guess that means we attack, try to find light up the stage with a one drop and a land. So spectacle, light up the stage, multiple, multiple, multiple triggers. Uh, flame of the Keld and light up the stage. So we will be emptying our hand again. Probably not for the reasons I want, though. Seriously, another creeping chill? You found two in your top 20. I guess it's not super improbable, but still rather frustrating. Uh, creeping chill, botanical sanctum. So they took the land of war wastes. But they've been trying to find their land drop every turn, so I assume it's coming down. Yep, Stitcher Supplier will do a good job fueling the yard for them. Land War Waste came down. Is this another supplier? Looks like another supplier. Oh, it's Gurmag. Okay, well, Gurmag makes things slightly more awkward. <laughs> Bomat. Uh, so let's go ahead and Bomat Courier. We can Flame of the Keld. That's gonna give us our Runway Steamkin mana. We can empty one of these. Do I empty both? Depends on what I see off to light up the stage. I think it's okay to keep these staggered a little bit. Let's just go ahead and light up the stage and we won't get a mana off of this guy, but that's fine. Uh, well, I have a Soul Scar Mage, so Gurmag's gonna shrink. Oh boy, that means if I attack with Bomat Courier, I'm probably gonna have to Wild Slash something stupid. Not a super big fan of that, but math is for blockers. So it's hit them for seven or kill all their creatures. I'm fine with that. So I need to shrink this. This runway won't have any problems killing a 3-3. Three, three. Then this grew so that those don't die. Do I want to pop them at? I probably want to pop them at. For Karizav? Uh, that was slightly awkward. That's fine, though. Uh, if I remove counters off this, it will die, so that means I'm not casting Karizav right now, and it also means I'm not casting the Fiery Temper. At least not until their turn. Didn't think that far ahead. Damage gets smarked off at end step, and this is until my next upkeep, so... Okay, yeah, opponent's done there. They tried. They didn't get there. Uh, Scab Clan's looking a little bit more appealing just because I know he'll probably get in. And they're casting a lot of Gather the Packs. And yeah, it's probably not worth it. Glorybringer can get in over everything except for Narcomoeba. It also blocks the Amalgams profitably. I think I'm good with this. The only conversation here is do I want Chandra's or Glorybringer's? And I think the answer is Chandra just because of the card advantage and the reach. But Glorybringer is also removal. It's temporary removal. I'm fine with Chandra. Try not to overthink. I think Chandra's just a little bit better overall with our strategy of being able to exile cards and trigger all of our prowess stuff. Yikes. This looks amazing. But if they have any, any one drop or two drops at all that are one ones. Or they mill into Narc Amoebas. These Bomat Couriers won't be able to attack. All right. Well, we're a little behind on clock. I'm usually not the slower player here, but trying to figure out exactly how to stack most of these triggers. Stitcher Supplier. Okay, I think that means I'm supposed to Soul Scar Mage here then. No, I think I'm supposed to run first Bomat Courier to his death. 
I don't like helping their strategy, but this is a guaranteed block, and then next turn I can run away Steam Cannon and then triple one drop. Assuming I find a land. Uh, opponent hit two Gather the Packs, hit Grizzly Salvage, and an Amalgam. So the Amalgam's the only thing that matters there. They revealed a Stitcher Supplier, and that's it. They kept their Blooming Marsh, which means that's their land drop next turn. All right, well, need to hit a land to triple spell, but if we hit a land, that means I get a triple spell, remove the counters, and potentially do something else. Uh, I won't be able to do anything else because I will have drawn a land for turn, but that's fine. This looks like a Gurmag Angler because they are paying costs. So I think I actually just want a Wild Slash off the top to shrink that with my Soul Scar Mage. I don't know, if they leave the additional mana up, they did show us that they boarded in Fatal Push, so might be slightly awkward trying to go for that line. Okay, we're just going to put a lot of red spells out there. And since these don't have haste, that means that Swift Spear comes down and I find something good, I'll be able to multi-spell with multiple attackers. I mean, having four 1-2 prowesses coming at you gets pretty nasty pretty fast. Although I don't really have any good draw engines right now. It would be Flame of Kel, but hmm, that makes me sad. They were leaving that up in case I was on the Soulscar Mage shrink plan, though. <sighs> Yeah, I'd love some lands at some point. That'd be amazing. I like lands. That's a painful land, but it works. Uh, I, mean, I guess just empty the hand. Hazard's a really good blocker versus Gurmag Angler. Do I want to trade one of these? Do I want to trade a Soul Scar Mage for three damage? No. No, I don't. If we hit a combo turn, this is just going to be so devastating attacking in with all of these creatures. Uh, they have not done any creeping chills yet. I'm at 14. Yeah, we'll throw a Bomat Courier in front of it. Really hoping Hazrat just stonewalls the Skirmag and hitting a land will do that. Look at that, we found a land. All right, and sequencing. So I do have the ability here to attack with Hazaret and chump block with one of these guys. If I attack with Hazaret, it means that opponent's going to have to keep the Gurmag angler, angler back. Yeah, I'm going to use this turn to assert my dominance in attacking with Hazaret and see if I can get the tempo play to be me attacking instead of them. Because I can throw both Swiss Spears away and be very happy with this exchange. And eventually they're going to have to chump block with this Gurmag Angler. And the way that our deck functions, like a light up the stage here, is going to be... Um, yeah, I'll let you kill a Soul Scar Mage. No, Prized Amalgam comes back. It's fine. They already have one in the yard. I don't want to incentivize them to dig deeper for it. Wow, just hard cast the Haunted Dead. Yeah, that'll block for a bit. <laughs> oh. All right, well, I guess I'm staying back now. Not very happy about it, but dead to three creeping chills is not where you want to be. block that, we'll double block this. They are just actually single block that. They're trying to get this to die so they can bring back the prized amalgams. Where are our light up the stages? That's really the only thing I'm looking for here. Attacking with Hazaret. 
So if I make my land drop, I can activate random map runes, which will sacrifice a land and deal two damage, but cost four, or I can just discard the Hazaret and bluff a card. So I'm going to discard Mountain at their end step. It costs one less mana. It doesn't require sacking one of my precious deserts in case I find something like uh, the graveyard exiling one in the future. Yep. This is terrible. We hit the right card and we're just going to combo so hard. Instant speed, grizzly salvage, didn't hit anything of importance other than another haunted dead. This haunted dead means that I can block again though. Uh, the emerge creature that they have can be emerged off of Gurmag for super cheap. Okay, we might be dead here. Need light up the stage into like Flame of Keld and Tormenting or Fiery Temper. And they shock this into play, which means they probably have another Abrupt Decay. Yep, we're dead. Oh, so, note to self, Graft Digger's Cage is required out of the board. We also care about discarding cards. I can see Leyline of the Void being an actual consideration for this deck because we could just Flame of Kel discard it if it's not in our opening hand. It gives us a really good mulligan target. Opponents also shouldn't be expecting it and bring it in at least game two. They would have it for game three, but we would decisively take game two. We put up a heck of a fight, though, in game one. Like, I honestly believe we would have had a decent shot of taking that game one. Man, do I really want to Wild Slash light up the stage on two? I think we can do better than that. This is better than that. Uh, Bedlam Reveler is showing to be a little awkward here. Like, we have one instant in our hand, and it needs six for it to be effective in our deck. I think Bedlam Reveler is going to be one of the first cuts if we talk about optimizing. All right, and then if opponent plays a mana dork, we're just going to kill it. If they don't, probably going to start building up the Bowmat Courier. Uh, Silscar, Wild Slash, turn two is really strong, and then we can just Flame of Keld anything that we draw if it's not relevant at the time. It really depends on what opponent's playing, though. But it's the only thing we're targeting right now. Oh, I was going to say is Mana Dorks, but Bomat Courier is pretty good to target too. Looks like we might be playing the real version of our deck. And I will kill Taylor before she can enable Prowess. Like, not going to let that happen. Hopefully we can one for one for a little while, and then we can use Flame of Kel to rebuild. Uh, if this is Devotion, which I don't believe Devotion plays Swift Spear, they're going to be trying to get a lot of mana symbols on the table, and things like Chain Whirler are probably going to be painful for our deck if they're just the burn build. I really, really don't want to see Eidolon. I think that's the big takeaway there is no Eidolon, please, sir. Ah, Dread Horde Arcanus is fine. They might multi-spell me next turn, but don't care. Uh, not attacking. I do want to be able to rebuild with Bomat Courier, and odds are Flame of Keld will find me something if they don't attack. I'm assuming they're going to Wild Slash attack with Dread Horde Arcanist and recast it. Oh, is this uh, Feather? This looks like it might be Feather. This is totally Feather. All right. So opponent is playing a deck around... Feather the Redeemed here. Feather is going to rebuy all these buff spells that opponent is playing, like Defiant Strike. Yep. Then Dreadhorde Arcanus will be able to cast them from the graveyard, so this Defiant Strike is basically a draw to give plus two. Interesting. So they're more concerned about growing the Hoplites out of burn range than they are actually dealing damage to me. Okay, then. Uh, this is slightly awkward, but all right. Game on. 
sad, depressing mulliganing. Uh, opponent is going to have the ability to beat us down pretty easily if they are on the deal four damage target creature and opponent controls two to yours and they have a feather. If they have feather here, they likely just pound us to the ground. They should have a non-zero number of cards that give protection like God's willing. <laughs> yep. So the odds of this Bomat Courier attacking are feeling very low at the moment. So we're likely just going to eat four damage here. Hope that this Flame of Keld gives us our combo and then we'll try to combo at the end. Yeah, growing these out of damage from our deck is pretty core to beating us and they had exactly the right card to do it. A little interesting that they led on Swift Spear. Can't see it here, but they had a Swift Spear on one. So they're a really aggressive build. They are kind of out of gas and we're going to be drawing three cards, but they also have a six, seven, four, five, and something that rebuys. All right, light up the stage is kind of a live draw. Soul Scar is fine, but not really that interesting. Uh, hitting this Dreadhorde Arcanist will make it so that it can't recast things, and that feels like a pretty good step forward. But right now, it kind of feels like I'm playing not to lose. And when you're the red deck, that's not great. Okay, so let's put a blocker out. I can cast this other light up the stage, or I can grow the shrink the Dreadhorde Arcana, so let's do that. Again, this is a replacement effect. It doesn't double up, so this is only going to get minus two, minus two for taking two damage. And yeah, these are my cards, opponent. I think what I'm supposed to do is just take the 10 here. Uh, if they have three buff spells, I die. So let's go ahead and just jump the big one. All right, back up Arcanist. They had a really explosive start, but we would be able to grind this down really hard. Ah. <sighs> All right, well, the effect of this is if it were to deal damage to a permanent or player, it deals double that damage, so, or it deals plus two. So this Soul Scar Mage will be able to kill a Dreadhorde Arcanist that's probably not good enough. Fiery Temper will kill the favored Hoplite. then I can Chump Block for a turn. I don't like any of this. Alternatively, Fiery Temper their face, it'll deal five. I can cast the Light up the stage, then I have to find exactly like Wild Slash and Land off the top. Probably should have attacked first, just because they're going to see the plus two damage when we kill the four or five with three damage, but this is fine. If they want to block with the Dreadhorde Arcanus, it's just going to die, so. All right, let's hope that they don't have burn. Odds are they do. We're dead either way, so just trying to get some damage in. All right, looks like they have it. Otherwise, they wouldn't just be burning spells here. God's willing, recast God's willing from the yard. Yep, they got it. All right, so Glorybringer to roast their creature seems pretty good. Scab Clan Berserker, 100% auto include in. If we get Renowned, which we should be able to squeeze it in somewhere, then it will just, anytime they try to cast something, even if they buy it back, it will just go away. Not feeling overly excited about Bedlam Reveler. And again, tri trimming the Hazarets when we're bringing in five drops just because our deck is supposed to be lean and efficient. Fiery Temper is hard to enable again and they're a fast deck. Carrie Zev is just a fun of. Like, she has first strike, but she's not going to do anything productive and she's not meant to be chipping in multiple points of damage. She does get better with an active Flame of Keld, but mm, yeah, not good enough. Uh, then I suppose that means that we'll probably just trim a Monastery Swift Spear. We likely won't be attacking very quickly and Soul Scar Mage would probably just be better in that slot. 
I think the key to winning this though will be the Scab Clan Berserker. Wow, tapped Red Source. Looks like we're mulliganing again. Uh, this is a little bit better. So this will allow us to Bowmat Courier on one, and then we'll be able to shrink our creatures even if they have removal spell, and we have removal for their first thing. So we'll hang on to this. We're going to tuck the Castle Empress just because it really doesn't matter, and I like all of our one drops. Let's go get Hellbent. Bowmat Courier. I'm counting on you to give me cards in my hand. Knowing that their feather also means that I can try to time this to eat one of their spells. Depending on sequencing, that might be slightly awkward, but... Uh, they're trying to figure out if they want to run out Monastery Swift Spear as a blocker. Looks like they are. Chandra is pretty good. Little sad that she's not attacking here because she's not Taylor, but we're going to clear the way and get in with Bomat Courier. We're really close to wanting to be able to catch out this Bomat yeah, Bo Courier already. So, by all means, we'll do it. Opponent really shouldn't have too many ways of interacting with Chandra that aren't the uh, 4 damage to your opponent's creature, 2 to yours. They do that because targeting one of their creatures with Feather Out will rebuy it. And it shouldn't kill feathers. Scab Clan Berserker, so close. All right, attack with all. There could have been an argument to run out the Soul Scar Mage if they had something like yeah, to remove the Bowmat Courier. It's fine, though. At least there we were bluffing interaction with, like, Wild Slash or something to grow the Soul Scar Mage if it was just Wild Slash. I really want to find a land because I do believe both of these cards are worth casting in this matchup. Depending on how opponent sequences things, Scab Clan could come down and immediately renown. Dreadhorde Arcanist. Cannot rebuy anything at the moment. Glory bringer. Okay, well, if they go to Epo, Matt Curry will, will cash out. We only have one other Chandra on the deck, but we have three more Scab Clan Berserkers. Yep. This will show them Scab Clan Berserker, but that's fine. This also might give me a Wild Slash or something to hit the Dreadhorde Arcana, so it won't be able to rebuy if they have removal. Wow, that that feels awful. Like that just feels so bad. All right, well, Glorybringer will be roasting some zombie warrior then in two turns, assuming that that's still the worst thing on the table. Nope, there's a feather. Light up the stage. So I believe this is just hard cast light up the stage. My soul scars won't get through unless I give them multiple prowess triggers. <laughs> okay, so they can 100% see this glory bringer coming down and roasting feather. So we will likely get hit by a God's Willing here when we go to do it. There's the Reckless Rage. Our replacement effect will shrink that, though. I don't think opponent's thinking through that. This is deal 4 damage, 2 damage. Oh, is this one ever one of my non-combats? Yeah, source you control. That's sad. So that's rebuying the Reckless Rage. Reckless Rage can kill the Glory Bringer. And it is an instant, so it can kill Glorybringer. Well, I think we just got pushed out of this game. We discarded a couple of good cards because we couldn't find lands, and then we drew nothing but lands and five drops. Uh, 
I mean, odds are that they're going to be able to kill the Soul Scar Mage regardless, so we may as well get the Defiant Strike out of them if they have it. If not, save one point. And that's a Swift Spear. So, am I favored to just run away Steam Kin, Swift Spear, attack in for two? Probably. If I Glory Bringer, they'll just deal two damage to Feather or probably Dreadhorde Arcanist because they're more concerned about it more concerned about Feather. Then that means I'll have three attackers next turn with the Glory Bringer in hand. Yeah, I think that's the plan. We needed some non-creatures. Chandra does work better with the Prowesses, but like if I had Chandra, I'd be able to eat Feather. Yeah, that was a sideboarding mistake on my part. It should have been Chandra over the Glory Bringer. Pun's trying to figure out what to do with the runway steam Ken. I think they're trying to decide if they have removal, if they need to spend it on the Soul Scar Mage right now. I mean, I assume with my mana up, they're going to try to save it. Apparently not. So the pseudo heroic here is going to grow it to survive. It's going to give it a 1-1 counter, and it's also going to let them scry. Again, feeling kind of behind at the moment. The Reckless Rage, wherever it is, Goes back to hand, so they'll still be able to remove Glorybringer next turn, but that means that at least these two should be attacking in, assuming they don't have, like, a God's Willing or something else. This Runway Steamkin also is likely going to take a hit. Let's see, this is at the beginning of the next in step. Yeah, we're, we're basically done. They can, I guess they don't have the red to Reckless Rage on their turn and my turn. But it, they've really been representing God's Willing for a while now, so I would have to assume that they have God's Willing. Yep, yep. Well, that means Glorybringer 2 might be able to answer Feather, but that leaves me without a blocker for three creatures. Currently taking seven. I roast feather. I'll have a blocker for one thing. Yeah, they're not going to be able to kill me this turn, but the fact that they're running this out just to get a 1-1 counter and just scry two is not looking good. They'll also have all of these cards back in their hand in step, so the following turn they can just kill my blocker. Yeah, we're dead. It's taking the opponent forever to figure out their combat math, but we are officially dead. All right, well, we'll go for one more just because it is a little bit of a quicker deck. Although time has not been showing it to be quicker. We are currently up one down three, playing a weird brew of mono red with a really, really giant flame of Keld. Chandra probably just needs to be a four out of this deck, the three mana Chandra, just because we have so many red cards. The only non-red card that we have is Bomat Courier. I do think we probably would have handedly taken Dredge should, had we uh, Graveyard Hate in the side. Like, we stayed caught up to them, but we just did not have any Graveyard Hate. <laughs> oh, this is such an awkward hand. We're supposed to buy you back from the yard when we want mana. <laughs> Alright, well, I suppose that means we're keeping it. We will be attacking on one, pretty much regardless. Then it's going to be Runway Steamkin into probably Carry Zev. I want the last land, but the Firebrand Archer is going to let us combo. Yeah, I guess we're tucking Carry Zev. All right, Island could mean a number of things. But as far as I'm concerned, it's currently Control or Mono Blue Devotion. 
It's Mono Blue Devotion. I need to be wary of Merfolk Trickster eating my Bomac Courier. Oh, it's the Nibonomonicon deck. Okay, so it's Wizards. They're going to be trying to get a lot of Enter the Battlefield triggers. Uh, this is a free attack. They will not be blocking with Nibon unless they have two. So let's go ahead and just get some beats in here. Assuming I can go to combat. If they have two Nibons, honestly, this time walk is fine. Yep, no blocks as expected. And that means we can run away Steamkin here. Uh, had we been on the play, we would have a Bomat Courier with three under it, and we'd be double spelling next turn, at plus discarding your hand to Flame of Keld. So Silvergill reveals Silvergill means that they're going to be drawing two cards here. Our attrition plan is not going to work amazingly well, so I'm going to actually have to run out this Firebrand Archer next turn. They should also have minimal removal. But if Flame of Keld is going off and they... Am I okay with this? I think I'm okay with this. No, they're currently up cards. I think I just need to go for a combo kill here. Uh, Merfolk Trickster on our Archer here is going to feel super bad. Yikes. I actually think this means I'm supposed to light up the stage here. I'd rather keep Bomat Courier back, but it's fine. Let's just alpha here, see what they want to do. I assume they're going to eat the Bomat Courier. If they eat the Runway Steamkin, it just means that Bomat's going to give us more cards. If they eat Bomat Courier, jeez. Okay, so they have a Master of Waves in hand. Yeah, that's interesting. I, I don't know why opponent would take that sequencing, but that just means that next turn's going to be pretty, pretty good for us. We can make our mountain for the land drop. We can remove all the counters off the runway steam can to bring the drown yard back after we flame of held it to the yard. Mm, that works too. Probably should have waited until they had flash, but that set us back. The bond doubling up harbinger, harbinger returning tap creatures. I am trying to focus on highlighting cards. Harbinger was a card I played a lot because Merfolk was my first modern deck and I had like three play sets because I bought a lot of Origins. I feel like I was the only person that bought a lot of Origins. Uh, opponent has another Silver Gill. Honestly, our life total here doesn't matter. We're going to run out Runway Steamkin into Monastery Swift Spear into Bomat Courier. Just dump our hand on the ground. Actually, are we? I really want a Flame of Keld here, and this Bowmat Courier doesn't have any value to me right now. What does Monastery Swift Spear mean? I don't think much. I mean, opponent's drawn a lot of cards. They're 12 cards in on turn 4, and they still only have 2 lands. Yeah, we're just going to go for the lethal combo. This might be a mistake. I think with opponent being this far behind on lands, it might be more correct to go for the combo kill. If they have like another Harbinger of the Tides, it sets me back kind of far, but I think this is correct. If they don't have an answer to this Firebrand Archer and Runway Steamkin, odds are I will kill them here. Like I can just use next turn to bring back the Drown Yard Temple and I'll have more mana. Keep all the new cards in hand. Like, I'll be down the Swift Spear, but the Swift Spear can just get chump blocked. Silvergill Adept Revealing Trickster. Trickster shutting down both of my creatures when I'm trying to combo off is going to be super frustrating. 
They did draw two more cards, though, so they should have a land drop. Oh, they don't have a land drop? Feels bad, man. I mean, they did have, like, all the right cards to go off for their deck, but... The cost of having two lands? Probably not worth it. Discarding Storm Tamer. <laughs> I mean, it's a wizard, but it doesn't have an Enter the Battlefield ability. I was looking at brewing this deck, and it was basically going to come down to being two, possibly three color, because the tempo cards like Siren Storm Tamer just were not good enough. Mm. Okay. Hazard's a decent backup plan. It's more correct to leave up the non-pain land. But like, even if they trickster me now, they have to hit Hazaret in the mix as well. Attacking with both of these will allow me to kill both of their creatures, so... Odds are they just chump block the runway if they do anything with it. More than likely, Silvergill gets thrown in front of Hazrat. It gets mowed over like a train, and we hit them for three. They'll have to hit the Firebrand during our upkeep, at which point we can just trigger Rainy Map and attack with everybody. Uh, red source, colorless. Never mind, that won't be red. This will only hit for two, so that's not worth chasing after but burn spells will still burn a lot hot take of the night burn spells will burn <laughs> uh they're not even gonna flash it in no oh okay that works they're bouncing my two tap creatures which would make a lot of sense to a lot of people but you're gonna be taking three damage for each of these firebrand archer triggers so just need to draw a little bit of burn So, one Wild Slash will put them dead to the two Rainy Maps in hand. I mean, opponents done a decent job of staying on tempo since they're on two lands, but, like, they have literally had just the best cards to go off, and I haven't found a single piece of removal for that in a bond. Okay, well, I suppose this is a thing. So if I alpha, they block Hazaret, Firebrand hits for four. If I stay back, I'll eat their creatures, but they have a trickster to tap down two of my guys. So yeah, I think I'm just dead here. The fact that they get to tap down two blockers means I'd be chump blocking one of these guys. I think I stay alive for one more turn if I keep everybody back and I don't get anything accomplished by attacking. Because Trickster comes down, taps down Hazaret and probably Runway. Then I chump block. They hit me for six. Nope, still dead. So, yeah, it's Alpha. Not like it matters. We're dead here. We did see a ton of lands, but they had just the perfect tempo cards here. Yep, that hits for four. Didn't have enough mana to pitch something to Hazard, otherwise it would have hit them for four more. I think opponent would have been dead to just a Wild Slash. Oh no, they saw the line of tapping my only creature with two triggers. Uh, let's see. I think I'm just back on Chandra, at least over Bedlam Reveler. Again, bringing in multiple high-end cards, so Trim a Hazaret and probably just a wild... The Fiery Tempers have been awkward. The idea was I was supposed to be able to pitch them to Bomat Courier or Flame of Keld. Having eight enablers should allow me to run a non-zero number of Fiery Tempers, but they've never come up since I have zero Fiery Tempers. The three damage would be relevant in a lot of matchups, but most of my creature's toughness are two, so having that one extra point isn't worth the extra... Mana cost. Yeah. Guess this is where we're at. 
They're going to have to have a good number of negates in their sideboard. Yeah, so I was working on brewing this. Do I actually just have it up? That'd probably be a more helpful discussion topic if I actually have the deck ready. Oh, yeah. I had so many wizards in black. I started looking at adding black, and it became a zombie wizard deck. <laughs> Uh, that's where I left last it. Um, ooh, I do have another wizard deck that had some of the interesting ads in it, though. So if we're looking at wizards, the Overwhelmed Apprentice is actually one of the better ones because it allows you to scry two with Nabon. It ends up being a scry four, and it's a one mana one two. Uh, Soul Scar Mage just being an all star here. Pretty much looking at red for the Wizards Lightnings. Champion of Wits is one of the better ETB effects. Emery will mill you for a lot, which would enable you to run Treasure Cruise, but not super on board with that. Grim Hard Specs could be kind of cute if you are looking for those triggers, but pretty much everything is on the back of Nibon and some of the Merfolks that our opponent was running. The Tidebinder is likely going to be coming out of our opponent's sideboard just because it will shut down a card of ours, like Hazret, permanently, as long as it's out. But like, there's a lot of card advantage, and card advantage doesn't mix very well with ETB effects. Oh my gosh. Like, seriously, deck? We... Ugh. We're monocolor with 21 lands. We should be fine. Okay, well, this is a curve. It's going to be a turn three Flame of Keld. That means we're shipping back to Chandra, just because she's not super relevant at the moment. A little more burn would be helpful, too. Like, maybe having a non-zero number of lightning strikes, or because we do have some wizards in our list, wizard's lightning would probably be appropriate on our list as well. I don't know. We're also playing a fun, janky version of the deck that is supposed to just empty our hand pretty quickly. And we've kind of been doing that. We haven't been refueling very quickly because um, Bedlam Reveler has not been doing his job. If our Bedlam Reveler comes in for his performance review, I'm not very happy with him. I do think that this Firebrand would just be better off as two more Chandras, though. Casting Rud Spells seems to be more focused for what our deck does instead of just non-creatures. It'd also make the Glorybringers out of the side more relevant and not make us lean on Chandra. Feather was a unique circumstance, though. I don't think it's correct to build your deck around a card like that. Who called it? I called it. Okay, multi-spelling at its best here. Uh, we will not get the additional trigger from Firebrand or basically anything here off the Bomat Courier. If he doesn't come down on one, he's not very impressive. But the fact that we can just throw him away is kind of appealing in the strategy. Oh no, odds are we're just going to Flame of Kel, discard whatever we drew, attacking with Bomat Courier, and draw a card after we've discarded our hand. That's a Tempest Gen. That's going to be a real clock. Perfect. I like lands. Well, triggering prowess doesn't feel very relevant anymore now that our only prowess guy is down, but non-creature will ping them, and that is relevant. By the time that this completely goes off, we will have our Firebrand active. I have to assume that they have, like, Harbinger or some random shenanigans that will try to stop it, but what can you do? Hmm. I, our mana is also a little awkward here. I wasn't able to tap, so I only have the one colorless up. Bomat Courier, two mana cycling. Only at the cost of discarding your hand. Ooh, that's good. Uh, that also is going to make it so that they're going to want to bounce the runaway Steamkin. Yeah, that's probably relevant. It can shrink the Tempest Gin if they don't have an answer to it. All right, opponent, your go. 
You got some stuff, I got some stuff. I'm hopefully going to have a lot more stuff, though. Opponent has five cards in hand. Tempest Jin moves up in life. He's now a 4-4. Four, four. I really want to see a three mana angel. I think they missed out on the cycle in Dominaria to not do like a Sarah Angel style three mana. Let's scale off of planes and do something busted. I know the meme right now is like white isn't very powerful, but there could have been a very powerful effect in white and they could have tested it out on this guy. It's off green, so triple white's really hard to have unless you're in a cocoa list. Guess we'll see, though. Out of the pain, I take four. Man, they are really thinking through it. There's another Firebrand Archer. <laughs> oh, that is amazing. That is so amazing. Uh, there's no reason to activate the Runway Steamkin here. So we're going to have two active Firebrands with an active Flame of Keld after drawing three cards. Oh, this is all I really wanted to do with the deck. Dreams are being lived here. Oh, so they're going to have to double... At, they're basically going to have to drop into Bond this turn and have exactly Merfolk Trickster and do it exactly on my upkeep. I think that's the only way they get out of this and that only buys them a turn. So I guess they could have Trickster here and then Harbinger with Nabon. That'd technically work. That'd bounce two of my creatures. I think opponent's trying to figure out what's going on because so many of the good pieces have come together. So Flame of Keld enters. We're going to discard our hand. Then we're going to pass turn over. Then we're going to trigger both of our sagas. So we're going to draw two cards, and then if Red Source hits, it hits for plus two. With the three cards in hand, we're going to have these Firebrand Archers. What are you targeting? You're targeting the Flame of Keld? Yes, you're targeting Flame of Keld. Uh, top or bottom... So if I put it on top, I'll draw, and then it will allow me to go off the following turn if we don't kill opponent. Yeah, we'll put it on top. And then I think I did technically learn my lesson here. That's not when you want to do that, but all right. Runaway Steamkin got kind of bad. Then, oh, nope, they're going to Harbinger it during, yep, that's the plan. I see the plan. Uh, the Firebrand Archers are still going to be the thing that kills them. Uh, technically not. I need to draw a non-creature here. I keep forgetting I've already drawn my cards off these Flame of Kelds. I just emptied my hands so fast. I didn't have any targeted damage. Yeah, Lightning Strikes would also be good in this list. I just need more targeted damage. It's an archer, not a wizard. Okay. Yeah, well, kill your Tidebinder, get my Swift Spear back. I mean, we're going to draw the Flame of Keld. We're going to trigger, hit them for six. Be able to attack in for six. Well, it's going to do more damage. So four, six, it's 10, and then 14, 18. Guess we'll see if opponent gets the read that they're actually supposed to stay on defense this turn. I 
archers. Just the firebrand archers with the additional plus two is going to hit them for six. They'll go down to nine, and then we're going to attack for like 18. Unless they Aether Gust is during combat, but I think that ship is sailed. They probably only had the one. The way tonight's been going, they have like two more in hand, but I'm assuming it's a Harbinger to bounce the runway steam can. And maybe a Nabon to also get the Swift Spear. I don't know. If they've had a good hand, there should be an Aether Gust or two in there. If they were really hoping for things for their deck to go right, they probably have another Tempest Gen. They're in blue. I need to just stop speculating and figure out what they actually have. Curious Obsession. So that's a pretty real clock. It's also going to draw them some cards. I'm thinking that this is a Curious Obsession to try to get the answers for what's going on. But I could be wrong. Ooh, four mana. This could be a big boy. Expecting um, Master of Waves. And that's going to be a lot of elementals. It'd make it so I can't attack. The Pro Red is also super painful. Yep, Master of Waves. All right, so that pretty much takes attacking off the table. With attacking not being on the table, I think that means I'm supposed to pop this for mana so I can crack a Rani Map Ruins here. We can go ahead and Flame of Keld with our mana. So we're going to ping them for six. We'll discard our hand and get a couple of new cards next turn. But at least for this moment, we can go ahead and... Cracker Rani Map Ruins. Gonna sack the sap Scavenger Grounds. It doesn't actually supply us with red. Uh, we're pretty much just dead to attacks, though. We'll see if the opponent can figure it out. I mean, Aether Gust on the Flame of Keldwell was on the stack to mess up our combo turn was super depressing. We would have had an active Flame of Keld on three and an active Flame of Keld on two this turn. But right now, we're going to be taking seven unblockable, and then just one of these needs to get through. Yep, yep. We'll just have to six through attacks and let them kill us. Uh, overall, kind of disappointed by this one. Uh, we play a lot of janky stuff, and this definitely made the column by saying we wanted to get Hellbent. No, we'll go back to this because I love that the Flame of Keldart was the actual vertical one. <laughs> uh, so, notes on this. The Fiery Tempers just didn't work. Having eight enablers to discard wasn't good enough. Well, technically 11 if you count the Hazarets. And technically 13 with the Bedlam Revelers. But the Bedlam Revelers were kind of a bigger problem overall. We just didn't really have a way to enable it. Uh, I would definitely redo this with more ways to trigger direct damage. A number of times that Flame of Keld went off and we weren't able to really optimize it at all because we had drawn lands or just like another runway steam can was just a little, little too high. Uh, we did get janked out a little bit by Master of Waves having Pro Red, uh, the Reckless Rage being able to kill our Glory Bringer. I will admit that was definitely a sideboarding mistake because we knew it was a possibility for them to have it, and I brought in Glorybringer instead of Chandra. Uh, we definitely should have been able to beat the Dredge list. I like you'd have to add cards for the sideboard for Graveyard, Graft Digger's Cage, obviously being one of them, because we have so many ways to discard cards. Leyline of the Void being free is also a possibility, but just because the color doesn't matter and almost everything we have cares about casting red. Chandra was slightly awkward in the fact that her ability only flipped when she triggered, and with Flame of Keld out, she was only able to trigger once, but she only cared about casting red spells, so I'd probably revisit that. Uh, if we had a way to get Wizard's Lightning turned on, I would probably be sliding that in, no questions asked. 
Uh, even at three mana, it's probably acceptable. The Fiery Temper is close at that point, but it really depends on wizard count. It would require a little bit of retuning there. Um, light up the stage performed pretty well, but we needed more ways to reliably trigger it. The number of times Womack Courier got blocked by a 1-1, like a Seder Wayfinder or just a Dreadhorde Arcanist or something. It really wasn't good enough. Again, more targeted removal so that Womack Courier could get in would have really accelerated the ability of the deck to go off. Uh, going 1-4 doesn't really get a stamp of approval, but it was kind of a fun concept, and especially with something like Song of Arya, I think is the one in modern where it gets a counter every time you cast a instant or sorcery and it keeps going up. We played a really fun version of this deck that had Song of Arya in it and it just blew up. Like, I love that deck. It was a ton of fun to pilot and it had some really explosive moments. If we get a card like that in standard that rotates into Pioneer, happy to see it again. Otherwise, probably a thumbs down on me on this one, but whatever, still fun. Uh, we were actually able to go hellbent quite a bit, so... Whatever you can do there. Either way, guys, I am 13. Thanks for hanging out tonight. Uh, I have a ton of fun decks up on Squirrel Dealer's website. It was a lot of modern until Pioneer came out. Now I do exclusively. My schedule's over there on the left. Feel free to hop on YouTube. Check it out. We've got a fun, ton of fun stuff up there. I will be back Sunday. Uh, we had a request from Neurodrain to build Permeating Mass, and that's been something that's been on my watch list. I'll see if I can get something together for it. But thanks again for hanging out, and I will see you all next week.